Now that we've seen a method for generating a wideband signal from a narrowband signal, we can understand the Armstrong indirect method. So it, this is indirect because we are not starting, we are not directly creating that instantaneous uh, frequency, but we're instead doing some indirect things to multiply it. So now that we understand how nonlinear devices can increase your frequency deviation and increase your carrier frequency, we can see what the full Armstrong method looks like. So the goal is to create a carrier frequency that is around here, right? This is where your FM channels are. When you go to your car or whatever, you can see that your FM channels are centered around here. And we also want a frequency deviation of about 75 kilohertz. So if, if we notice this, right, we know that the frequency deviation would go up or down from that. And if this was FM, this means 150 kilohertz. Uh, which is right about 0 0.15 megahertz and we know that this is approximately the channel bandwidth of your FM channel right so on your radio right we you tune it in to about 90 megahertz and then the channels all have about 0 0.2 megahertz bandwidth uh, so this goal is to create some signal that has that amount of bandwidth and that carrier frequency Okay, so to start with, we're going to start with a carrier frequency of 200 kilohertz. So this is very low, much lower than this, and a small frequency deviation. We're going to multiply this up, kind of ratchet it up using these nonlinear devices, a, pro a nonlinear device process, in order to get to this, this goal that we have. So the process is going to use a 64 multiplier to increase the carrier frequency and deviation, then a heterodyne process to change the carrier frequency and then another multiplier to kind of finalize the carrier frequency and that carrier freak uh, uh, the bandwidth of the channel which is related to that deviation so first right we know from the previous video how to generate a uh, narrow band fm you have your signal it comes in here right your message comes in here gets integrated into at goes into this DSBSC modulator here, and it's mixed with a sine wave, and that comes from a carrier, uh, a cosine wave with, at your carrier frequency, your your first carrier frequency, which got phase shifted, and used a DSBSC modulator. Any of the ones that we discussed in previous videos. So this is the first component of it of the wave, and then the second component, right, is a cosine wave here and so that gets mixed uh, uh, combined together here into your narrow band fm signal if we start with a carrier frequency of 200 kilohertz right this is going to keep our um, fc quite small it's going to have a, a pretty small frequency deviation here uh, quite a bit less than our signal bandwidth and we'll need to maintain uh, this uh, ratio of the deviation to the bandwidth is much much less than one for the narrow band right so for this first part we're starting with a narrow band signal um, and for B uh, your uh, for the bandwidth your voice varies from about 50 to 15 kilohertz uh, so therefore we'll say that the um, frequency deviation is about 25 hertz so the worst case beta is a, about 0 0.5 uh, which is still less than one maybe not much much less than one but even at the highest frequencies right it's it's going to be pretty small so this this could be seen as a a, a relatively genuine narrow band fm signal so this this process will first be used to generate the narrow band fm signal and then we're going to use the nonlinear devices in cascade to, to use to create this Armstrong method. So at our output here, we have a carrier frequency of 200 kilohertz and a 25 hertz frequency deviation as our narrow band FM signal. And that is what comes out here. So then it's going to go through a multiplier, a heterodyne process, a multiplier, and an amplifier. The first multiplier is a 64 times multiplier. And recall, right, most of these nonlinear devices. Uh, have a are going to be two or three times multipliers and that's because the higher multiplier you use the smaller the amplitude is going to be you have to amplify at the end so it's better to use the 2x or 3x uh, terms from your nonlinear multiplier 
So you do it, uh, you, you maybe cascade some 2x, 3x, whatever. You get you get these multipliers that are often in the uh, power of two. So you do a 64 times multiplier, which brings you up to a carrier frequency of 12.8 megahertz and also multiplies the bandwidth, right? The, or the frequency deviation uh, by 64 as well. So then at this point, you have a carrier frequency of 12.8 megahertz and 1600 hertz deviation. Uh, we still aren't quite to our FM channel, so we're going to use a uh, heterodyne converter. We actually um, go from uh, 12 megahertz uh, to down to a slightly lower frequency, right? We're going to convert down to a slightly lower uh, carrier frequency using the heterodyne process. And then we're going to put it through another multiplier here. And the, the really the reason for this is to uh, choosing some multipliers that are going to get the carrier frequency uh, into the, that right frequency, but also this frequency deviation into 0 0.075 kilohertz, which is, is very close to half that channel bandwidth. So the, the final 48 times multiplier is going to multiply this 1.9 megahertz into 91.2 which this is where our fm channels are and it's also going to increase that deviation uh, to the point where we have a deviation of 0 0.5 which means that the total bandwidth might be about uh, 0 0.150 kilohertz very close to our our known channel bandwidth so the final output here is about 90 megahertz with about 0 0.15 channel bandwidth and so this is basically what we know is uh, what is used for our FM radio today. And so this is the Armstrong direct method for generating the FM signal that fits in the channel bandwidth and fits uh, at that carrier frequency just like we see in our car radio.